Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good spirit here this morning. Hallelujah. It's a good life and just living for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good to see you all here. Thank you for coming. Good looking crowd. Amen. Happy when, that we're growing. Amen. And happy that we're, we're uh, having less and less absentees now every week. We appreciate that very much. I believe it's essential in this last day. If we're going to make it, we need the church. If we're going to make it, we need the church. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter number 3 is where we're going to minister from this morning. Uh, something I feel like the Lord has led me to. Uh, again, I'm going to encourage you this morning. If you haven't started it or if you don't know about it, uh, we have some brochures, but this praying through the tabernacle will change your life. It will change your life. And if please, I, I'm going to encourage you to do it because importunity gets things done. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3 and 14 says, For this cause, everybody say that, for this cause. For this cause. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this cause, Paul says it twice in this particular book. Verse chapter 1 or verse 1 of this chapter and verse number 14 of this chapter. He says, for this cause. And I would know that you're about to ask and think it in your mind, for what cause? And the cause here, Brother Pete, is the emergence of of the Gentile church, or rather the true church, which included both Gentiles and Jews, which basically takes up the whole world. The plan is, the, the focus of this lesson, the plan is to remind the Gentiles and let the Jews know that God has one church. There's just one church. There's not a multitude of churches. There's not a multitude of ways. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Ephesians 4 says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God that's a father of all, above all, through all, and in you all. Narrow is the way. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that lead to life everlasting and few there be that find it. If you will listen this morning, you're going to leave here never once again among those few because whether you choose to take it or not, I'm going to tell you what the way is. Oh, I tell you what, I'm excited, Brother Pete, that I know the way. I'm excited that I know the truth. I'm excited that I've had my steps ordered by the Lord and I've done what the Bible said just like they did on the day of Pentecost. Just like they did in the beginning. Jesus said that repentance and remission of sins would be preached in my name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Brother Billy, I've got happened to me just like it did to them. And I'm excited about that. Twice. The church, the true church of the living God, the inclusive church of the living God, that anybody who wants to can be a part of the church of the living God. Here describes descriptive verses that describes what they once were or what we once were and what we now are. Ephesians 2 verses 19 through 22 says, Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Yes, 
No more strangers and foreigners. Brother Robbie, that's what we were. Strangers and foreigners. That word strangers means foreign or alien. That word foreigners means dwelling near. But it's a contrast with fellow citizens. One word could best describe what we were. That word is outside. We were on the outside looking in. As many folks under the sound of my voice are today, let me tell you something. I don't care where you are. There is nothing in this world that compares to being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There is nothing in this world that can compare to the joy that you feel when the Holy Ghost is flowing through you, when it's springing up as a well inside of you. There's nothing better in the whole world than having God inside of you. I thank God that this more than me just believing or me more than just making a good confession or shaking somebody's hand, but the God of all glory has taken up residence inside of my soul. A place of habitation. That's the church of the living God. That's the church of the living God. But now we are fellow citizens which is a member of a city or a state or the inhabitant of a county or district. It means having the same citizenship. We are of the household, which is of or belonging to a house of persons or of one's household or kindred. In this instance, it is referring to the company of the redeemed, of those that belong to the family of God. There's only one way. Excuse me, there's two ways. There's two ways to belong to a family. One's to be born into it. Second's to be adopted into it. Which we're adopted into it, Brother Rice. But the Gentiles were first adopted and everyone that's been brought into the church thereafter has been born into it. I'm glad I can say I'm a part of the family of the living God. I say it with no arrogance or with no elite attitude or with not with my nose up in the air because I know where I was and I know where I could have been. But I know where I've been since I've been born into the family of the living God. There's not been one day in my life, uh, whether I'm on the mountain or I'm in the valley, whether I'm right with God or whether I'm not, uh, not one day that my life has not been different since I was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He changes lives. And we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. The apostles speaks of the New Testament. The prophets speaks of the Old Testament. We are built upon that foundation because the New Testament apostles experienced what the Old Testament prophets prophesied of. Hebrews 11 said that they searched for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker was God. And these all died in faith, having received not the promise, but God having provided some better thing for us. that they without us should not be made perfect or complete. We are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone or benchmark. If you're going to be saved, it's going to be because you have measured your life off the life of Jesus Christ. The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ Himself is the measuring stick by which we measure our life. And without the power of the Holy Ghost, we won't measure up. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost to help bring us into line with what Jesus desired for our lives. I'm glad to say I'm in that church. I'm thankful that I'm in that church that's built upon the rock, built upon a firm, solid foundation the apostles and prophets, and Jesus is the cornerstone. In whom, in whom, in Jesus Christ, all the building fitly framed together groweth 
Everybody say, I'm growing. Unto a holy temple unto the Lord. In whom we are also built together. Everybody say together. For a habitation of God. Through the Spirit. Not a pretty edifice. Not so that he can stand up there on his throne in heaven and say, look at the beautiful church I've built. Look at the beautiful people I've got. But Brother Pete, it's a place of habitation. That's what we've got to realize about the church. It's not something that the Lord sets up on a shelf somewhere and, and admires as a beautiful trophy, but he built it as a place of habitation. That means he's going to live there. That's not where we pick him up on Sundays. Sometimes we drop him off at the babysitter on Sunday afternoon and pick him up again Sunday night. And then those of us that are faithful to the house of God pick him up again on Wednesday night. No, it's not, this is not a part-time relationship, Brother Robbie, but he has took up a place of habitation. It's not a holy daycare, Amen. but it's where he lives. The church, the whole body of believers. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You've got to have the Spirit. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I am with you now, but I shall be in you. It's the Holy Ghost in me. He's living in me. That's why we've got to go from just showing up and getting a few tingles. If you think you're coming and getting a fix of, and getting your feel good, feel good massage, holy massage in the Holy Ghost, you've lost your mind. Brother Pete, but it's welcoming the presence of God in and changing my life. A couple of goosebumps and a good feeling and shedding three tears will not get you to heaven. You've got to have Christ in you. You must receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I come to tell you, it's for whosoever will. It's for whosoever will. Sister Eloise, uh, old, young, rich, poor, pretty, ugly, white, black, red, orange, yellow, green, brown, whatever. Everybody that wants to can be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost because uh, it's a gift uh, and it's promised to you. And Jesus thought so much of it that he paid the ultimate price uh, and gave his life and shed his blood that we might be saved. That we might have an abundant life. Groweth unto a holy temple. We are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. It is for this cause. For this cause. Everybody say that again. For this cause. That Paul declares himself a prisoner of Jesus Christ. A prisoner of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles. Imprisoned by a calling. Imprisoned by a calling to share the gospel with the world beyond Jerusalem. And beyond Israel. And with the knowledge of this cause, Paul prays for them. Paul prays for them because he understands the cause. He understands we're in a battle. He said, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family. Of whom the whole family. In heaven and earth is named the whole family one father Malachi 3 and 10 says you don't have to go there hath we not one father hath not one God created each of us all of us one father one household one family and one name and one name John 5 and 43 says I'm come in my father's name Matthew 1 and 21 says, you bring forth the Son and call his name Jesus. John 14 and 26 says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. The Holy Ghost, the name of the, that represents the Holy Ghost is Jesus. And Acts 4 and 12 says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name. 
under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. He has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. There's one name. And the whole family in heaven and earth is named by that name. Ephesians 3 and 16. This is the content of his prayer. He's saying, this is what I pray for you. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Y'all better be glad I can't dance. Because I feel excited enough to be a dancing fool this morning. Like crazy old David. That he danced before the Lord with all of his might. He shucked his crown. He shucked his kingly robe. He just one of the people. Praising the Lord. That he would grant you. A grant is something that's given to you. According to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might by his by his spirit in the inner man. The gift that comes comes from the riches of his glory. So what does that mean to me? What that means to us is the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now on two occasions in this passage, Paul refers to the enlightenment of the riches of his glory in chapter 1 and verse 18. And now that the riches of his glory would allow the inner man to be strengthened with might by his spirit. So what does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 6 and verse 17. Let's remember what that says. But God be thanked that ye were. Everybody says were. That means used to be. The servants of sin. But ye have obeyed. Oh no. I knew we'd have to get there pretty soon. You have obeyed from the heart. Not with your lips. Not with your arms or your feet. But obeyed from the heart. I was the servant of sin. But through obedience to the word of God from my heart. That form of doctrine which was delivered you. I was the servant of sin. And when I served sin, sin has kept me, brother David, from the glory of God. Sin has separated me from the glory of God. You cannot keep living how you want to and be right with God. Because sin separates you. And it's lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You start praying through the tabernacle and dying out to the flesh every morning, it's going to amaze you at the power of holiness you'll walk in. Because we climb on that altar which is not a place to play tiddlywinks and jacks. But Brother Terry, it's a place of slaughter where I crucify this flesh with its affections and its lust. Boy, I hope y'all packed a lunch. As good as I'm feeling, y'all might be here a while today. You were the servant of sin, but obedience... God have mercy. Obedience from the heart, that form of doctrine which was delivered you. You were the servant of sin until you obeyed from the heart the doctrine which was delivered unto you. So you might ask the question, what's the doctrine that Paul preached? I thought you would ask that, and it just so happens I've got the answer for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren... I declare unto you the gospel. Oh, y'all better hold on to your seats because I'm about to have a fit. Oh, God, have mercy. 
the gospel. Brother Dole, it's the good news. I've got good news. Which I preached unto you, which also you received. I can preach it till I'm blue in the face, but if you don't receive it, it does you no good. Which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. I tell you what, saints of God, and I'm going to move on. This ain't even got nothing to do with my lesson, but Brother Billy, I'm glad I'm still standing. I'm glad I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I've been kept by the power of God. I've been through the storm and I've been through the flood. I've been over the mountain and I've been through the valley. I've swum a lot of rivers, but I'm still standing. And it ain't by might nor by power, but it was by his spirit. Sister Sharon, that's what kept me. It's the spirit that has kept me. The spirit, because I obey, Brother David, from the heart, what the preacher said to me. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission, for the washing away, the cleansing of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what I did. And I'm still standing. I heard it. I received it. I believed it. I did it. By which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Don't think you can show up here and get one good dose and walk out of here and never darken the door again and still be saved. You got to keep it. You got to keep it. Unless you've believed in vain. Oh, I'm still, I'm telling you with the gospel that Paul preached. I forgot a minute. Let me get there. For I delivered unto you first of all. First thing you got to do, Brother McKinney. I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. That's the first step, Brother Pete. That's not the gospel. He said, first of all. First of all, first of all, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And That he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Christ died, was buried. Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Guess what? I died at an altar of repentance. I was buried with him in baptism in the name of Jesus for the remission, whoa, God have mercy, of my sins. And I was resurrected. Christ died, I died. Was buried, I was buried. He rose again. And I rose again, resurrected from the dead, from falling short. And now, by the grace of God, I can experience the glory of his riches. Because sin has been defeated. Oh, yeah, I've made some mistakes. I made some mistakes, but where did I go? I run to the rock. I run to the rock. Ooh. David said, lead me to the rock. That's higher than I am. Lead me to the rock. Oh, I run to the rock. What's the rock? What is the rock? It ain't something you learn from flesh and blood. 
but it's revealed to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ died, was buried, rose again. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. How shall you? God have mercy. How shall ye that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's what the Bible says. When did I die to sin? When I repented. And you that are buried with him in baptism, it ain't, I'm not just going down in water, cold water, hot water, dirty water, running water, still water. I'm not just going down in water. I'm being buried with him. Oh, Christ died. I got a lot more to teach, but I can't leave here. I'll just remember, I taught it to you months ago, probably long enough ago. I teach it again. I've been waiting for time to pass, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What is the power of godliness? The power that changes a life. The whole religious world, uh, predominantly the religious world, they preach a religion where you don't have to change nothing. We're just all sinners saved by grace. I don't know about you, but I've sinned since I received the Holy Ghost. I may be the only one, but I have. But let me tell you something, I didn't stay that way. And it had no power over me. It has no power over you once you have been born again. And you get it under the blood, and guess how far it's gone away from you. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our sins from us. That he was, that's the gospel that Paul preached. Christ died, was buried, and rose again. He didn't stay. He didn't stay dead. He didn't stay buried. But he rose again. Then that next part of that scripture. Verse 16 says. The spirit. Working. In the inner man. Now think about that. I received the Holy Ghost. Pow greatest thing I've ever felt in my life I spoke in other tongues as the spirit filled me up to overflowing and I've done it again and again and again and again and again and again matter of fact I plan on doing it more and more and more and more the closer I draw to God brother Rice the Bible does say building you up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost The spirit working, somebody, let me help you right now. There are so many people that have such a messed up ideology of the apostolic church. People think, people think you got to stop this, quit this, you got to change all this, you got to stop, stop, quit. Damn, people can't do nothing. I'd go down there, I'd go down there if I could keep on doing what I'm doing. I didn't just make that up. I've been told that. First thing, let me tell you, just come on. Just come on. If you, you're not going to get clean enough. You're not going to get clean enough. You come and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And notice what this scripture just said. Give me verse number. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now those of us that were born with the Holy Ghost, we need to stop expecting people to be veterans, to be full grown mature saints as soon as they receive the Holy Ghost. If they mess up, you better hug their neck. We're not in the business of damning and condemning people. But the Bible tells us very plainly right there that when you receive the Spirit, 
to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Receiving the Holy Ghost is an instantaneous change. Don't you think for one second that when you are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and it ain't a gradual thing either. When you get full, you get full, honey, and you get full in a hurry. But then this scripture is telling me, Brother David, that the Bible strengthens the inner man with might by his spirit. You can't do it by yourself. Stop trying to be so good that you become pleasing to the Lord. Let me tell you something else, saints of God. Stop trying to pray so much, fast so much, and read your Bible so much that you finally, the Lord finally says, well, you've done enough now. He don't work that way. He is what he is. I heard Brother Arnold say yesterday, Brother David, he ain't never had a bad day. The Lord ain't never had a bad day. He's never had an off day, Brother Rice. He's never had a day when his miraculous power was diminished. Never. Never had a bad day. He is what he is all the time. He is the Alpha and the Omega, which is and was and is to come, the Almighty. But I'm not that way. I can concur with John the Baptist when he said, I'm not the Christ. I'm just the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I'm not him. So what I'm preaching does you good, but there's one coming after me who's mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But the work of the Spirit is a process. And the prevailing idea is to let the Holy Ghost strengthen the inner man which manifests itself on the outer man. So the next time somebody tells you, boy, they got great singing, great spirit, great preaching. <laughs> Beautiful church, friendly people, but I just can't go there because of this, 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 this. You look at them as nice as you possibly can with a big smile and say, baloney. Baloney. You can't do it with your sleeves hanging off the end of your arms, your skirt tail dragging the ground, your hair piled on top of your head till it's bumping the lights. You can't do it because it will never be by might. It'll never be by power. That word might and that word power refer to our abilities, but it'll always be by the Spirit strengthening there's enough Holy Ghost in this place to fill everybody and refill everybody ten times over. The Holy Ghost is in this place. The work of the Spirit, once we're filled with His Spirit, then He begins the operation of molding us and shaping us in His image. For when the time comes, the Bible says, when you ought to be teachers, then you got to be taught again. There are many of us that we, we'll never think, oh, I'm, I'm no good, I'm bad. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. I can't, somebody told me here a while back, I've been told this several times, I just can't praise like I want to because I feel too much guilt. So what's praising God got to do with you anyway? Huh? Brother, Brother Billy, you know for certain when I'm clapping my hands and lifting my hands, I got on a white shirt today, it won't be that way long, but I wear them colored shirts and I sweat from my elbows down to my belt line. Brother, Brother Kendall, I ain't showing off for nobody. I sure enough ain't praising the Lord for you all. I praise him because he's been good to me. I praise him because he continues to be good to me. Because he saved my old sorry carcass. I lift up holy hands in the presence of the Lord. Oh, please don't think because I'm pastor of this church, I've arrived. I still have it. He's, the Holy Ghost still working on me, brother. Holy Ghost is still working on me. But thank God, 
we are now working together. We're now on the same page, Brother Pete. He's always, ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now. He's always been working on me, Brother Rice. But he was just trying to get me to come around to his way of thinking. But now that we're thinking the same way, because, Brother Pete, the Bible tells me that I've got the mind of Christ. Now, Brother David, that we're thinking the same way. And I realize he knows me better than I know myself. This works a whole lot easier. It's a whole lot easier when me and the Lord's on the same page. And I realize we're trying to accomplish the same thing. I, my, my view of him is no longer this big bad God standing over top of me that every time I make a mistake, he's marking it down. And after I make enough mistakes, he says, you're done. Reckon how many people have that view of God. Huh? Like he's, like he's keeping a list or something. And then, then if I pray so much, I kind of get rid of a couple of bad things. Oh, my goodness gracious. The devil wants us to keep believing that. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Wasn't my idea for him to go to Calvary. But he did. And Brother McKinney did it for me. So that as honored as I've been and as dirty and wrinkled and scarred as my garment was, that he could wash me whiter than snow. So don't, don't misunderstand. I believe in holiness. I believe in men looking like men and women looking like women. I'm still going to keep on preaching everything I've always preached. Matter of fact, probably a little tougher. Because if it, we need anything in this world, we need the church to stand strong. All I need is two or three amens. And it's on like a pot of neck bones. I can't have them no more, but I can preach about them. It's the Holy Ghost strengthening us on the inner man. Let God do his job. Let him be God. That's all we can truly give to him. Paul told the church on Mars Hill, he said, as though he needeth anything. Like we think the Lord needs our little bit of prayer. Like he can't make up his mind if he wants to heal somebody or not. He's waiting to see if we can get up enough people to pray about it before it gets done. He just needs us to pray enough so we get close enough to him, get out of the flesh, so when he does work a miracle, we can give him the glory instead of thinking we did something. Because the Lord will do a miraculous thing. People are going to stand before him in the judgment. And, oh, my goodness gracious. They're going to stand before him in the last day and start listing off their accomplishments. Is that not what the Bible says? There's many going to come say, have we not cast out devils in your name? Healed the sick in your name? Done many. Look what I did. Look what I did. And he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So that completely throws out, well, I'm going to be so good, he's got to let me go. No. Ain't happening. You can't do it. That's why you got to have the Holy Ghost. That's why you got to have the Spirit of Christ within you. Oh, man, it ain't even very late yet. Praise the Lord. That Christ, give me the next verse, brother, 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That habitation, dwell, household, live it. Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. A dwelling place, a place of habitation. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. Say, what kind of love? I was hoping you'd ask that too. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And Who's your neighbor? Everybody around you. Everybody you meet on the street. The beginning, the roots are love. The foundation is love. The fruit will then be love. Ephesians 3 and 18. Because I got to get down. I ain't even got to the part I wanted to preach this morning. 
that you may be able to comprehend. What's that word comprehend mean? Get your mind wrapped around it. Begin to see him as he is. That you may be able to comprehend with all saints. Now here we go. He, it's his desire that everybody comprehends it. That everybody. That there's no elite, elitism in the church anymore. No longer do we lead like this. But we lead with the choo-choo train method. We're all on the same level. There ain't no, as Brother Doug Lewis used to say, big eyes and little U's in the kingdom of God. We're all. Such were some of you. Remember that? Paul said, I'm afraid I preached to you and myself to come a castaway. We're, we're just people. And preachers are people too. We're just people. We have a soul and we got to do the same thing. Okay? Got to do the same thing. That we may be able to comprehend, wrap our minds around. What is the breadth? That's the width, the length, the depth, the height. To begin to understand, to begin to comprehend the far-reaching coverage of the love of God. To begin to, to, to there's just got to be a spark in your mind that you say, you mean the love of God reaches clear God in mercy. Think about it. The love of God reaches clear over to where I'm at. Clear down to where I'm at. To the far reaching understanding the, the blanket covering of the love of God. That we may be able to comprehend, may be able to understand it. And if we can begin to comprehend, this is why it's so important. If we can begin to comprehend how much he loves us, then we'll begin to love ourselves, and that is the biggest thing stopping most people from living for God. It's a sense of inadequacy that says, I'll never be able to measure up. Well, guess what? Let me remove all doubt. You never will. We never will. It's not about my ability, I have to understand, Brother Pete. It's about how much he loves me. It's about how much he loves me. Got to begin to understand and comprehend it. Then the next scripture says, and to know... The love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Let me, and I don't mean to get X-rated, it just might be PG-13. Now, don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about either. What it means, Brother Pete, is we have got to get past the getting to know you stage with the Lord. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. First time you go out with a girl, you know, you're sitting there thinking the whole time, I wonder if she'd get upset if I hold hands with her. And as soon as you pick her up, you're already thinking, wonder what'll happen if I smooch her at the door. Wonder if she's going to let me kiss her at the door. Nowadays, of course, she might kiss you when she gets in the car. But <laughs> But getting past that awkward getting to know you stage. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Get past that feeling him out stage. Until, Brother David, we know that there's comfort there. That there's a sense of, of belonging there. There's a familiarity there. That's where we've got to get, Brother Billy, with the Lord and our relationship with him. He loves me so much he gave his life for me. And he's been trying and trying. This is the cause. For this cause. He loved all of y'all, but not me. You, you just don't understand, preacher, what I've done, what I've said, where I've been, who I am. I really like the idea that you're preaching, but it fits everybody but me. I even know some people that won't live for God, but they witness everywhere they go. All that is is a lack of faith. But then, Brother Billy, we get past that getting to know you stage, and we embrace we embrace with knowledge the love of God in its fullness that you might be filled. Everybody say filled. filled. 
Say it this. That I might be filled. That's the cause. For this cause. That we might be filled. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. That we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Somebody tell me where else we see that, that passage, that reference, that descriptive comment be given. Let me just bring you back to Colossians 2 and 9, which says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He desires for us through the power of the Spirit to be just like him. And brother David, it's the Spirit that makes us that way, not ourselves, not good intentions, not good ideas, not reading uh, uh, the power of positive thinking 57 times. It ain't going to save you. You can read the purpose-driven life until it's dog-eared and black and you need to buy a new copy, but that's not going to save you. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him. Let's stand. Come to the music. Now unto him that is able. Everybody say he's able. To do. Say it. He's a doer. He's not a thinker. He's a doer. Amen. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Here's what he's saying. If you'll just let me in. I'm going to blow your mind. If you'll just let me in, your life's going to be better than it's ever been. Oh, yes, you might still have problems, but you don't look at them the same way. They don't control you anymore. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us that goes to tell me if we only let him in a little bit, he'll only do a little. But if we will let him, Brother Rice, strengthen the inner man, then he will begin to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to that power that worketh in us, that works in us. Why do you think Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that's within you? Let it out. Remember, Sister Mangan? You got to let it out. You got to let it out. You got to let him out. According to the power that worketh in us, we must always know beyond the shadow of a doubt he's able. He's able. Do you want that power working in you? Don't you want to comprehend don't you want to know for this cause? Give me my last scripture, brother. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 10. For this cause, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, hath shown oh God. He said, let there be light, and the light shined in the world. That same spirit has shined in our hearts. You, can you comprehend that? Can you comprehend that? The same light shines in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the... In the face of Jesus Christ. Next verse. But we, everybody say we, have this treasure. What treasure? 
the knowledge of the love of God, the fullness of God in us, in earthen vessels. That's all I am. That's all I am. Stay with me just a minute. Stay with me. I just had you stand up because you was getting too easy. Brother Kendall, as long as we remember that we're just earthen vessels, I came out of the dirt, brother. And you know what? When I kick the bucket, guess what? Going back. I'm going back. I'm going back to the dirt. But the Spirit is going back to the Father which gave it. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Next verse. For we're troubled on every side. Can I get an amen? amen? Yet not distressed. We are perplexed. My mind is all messed up sometimes. Things just assault me. But not in despair. Brother Rice, that's the difference. This is the difference to somebody having the Holy Ghost or somebody not. We all have issues. All have things coming against us. We all got problems. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Rejoice not against me, O oh mine enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus might be made manifest. Where? Huh? In our bodies. <laughs> that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. That means I can see. But where does it... I can make y'all sit down and do this another hour. I'm on now. Brother Rice, he said he has strengthened the inner man. That word manifest, Brother Billy, means everybody's going to be able to see it. Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Always bearing about in the body the dying. I got to repent. I've got to die out to the flesh every day so that the life. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands up. Let's just lift our hands up. Thank you.